Hello viewers and welcome to another episode of English from VIOL Ramkrishnamat. I hope you are enjoying and learning from our episodes of English Grammar. Today we bring you another episode on a different concept of grammar. Today we have some two girls with us. Let's talk to them and find out what are they doing and who they are. Hello. Uh, what's your name and what are you doing? Can you tell us something about yourself? My name is Deepika. Deepika. I have two children. Okay. Um, Deepika, what do you do? I'm a housewife. Okay. So then, Deepika, you are a housewife. Why are you learning English? Because of our children and I want to become a teacher. Okay. That's nice. Mm -hmm. All right. And you? I'm Chaitanya. Mm -hmm. mm, I'm come from Nalgonda. Okay. Uh, I am a housewife. Okay. So what is your purpose of learning English? I want to become a good employee. Oh, alright. So that's the reason you're learning English. Okay. Right, Deepika, you said you have two children. Okay. So sons, daughters or what? Uh, in, in elder one is a son and younger one is daughter. Alright. So can you tell me about your son and daughter? Elder one is 11 years old okay. and younger one is 6 years old. Right. Uh, my uh, my da younger daughter is uh, more in intelligent uh, okay. uh, mm -hmm. uh, comparing with my son. Okay. And uh, mm. she is very... Um, Who is more active? She is very... Uh, uh, my uh, daughter only very active. Your daughter is very active. Your son is not quite active? Uh, compared with my son. Compared to your daughter, the son, compared to the son? Compared with my son. Daughter is active. Active. Okay, very nice. Alright, Chetana, you said you are from Nalgonda. How long have you been in Hyderabad? Two years. Two years. Two years on so, do you like Hyderabad? Somewhat. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why do you not like Hyderabad? It is um, a yeah, metropolitan city and... Yes. Uh, mm. uh, okay, what is nice here or maybe what is nice in Nalgonda? Compared to Nalgonda, um, Hyderabad is more polluted. It is okay. uh, uh, one of the drawback, uh, but okay. uh, it is very nice to live. It is very nice to live here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now see, when you are talking about, no, now you are comparing your son and daughter. And then you are talking about, or you want to say something about Hyderabad and Nalgonda. Alright, then we have to make use of some comparisons. Instead of making single, single sentences, uh, it's better if we make use of some comparisons. So today, let me teach you something about the comparisons. So then, this is called comparisons. When we want to say persons and things and places or maybe events, some actions, how they are similar or how do, do they differ from one another, then we make use of these comparisons. In very simple word, when we have to compare, we make use simple words like as, then maybe so do I and then uh, as, so do I, like Alright, so we can make use of these words when we want to talk about comparisons. Alright, so to start begin with as, we can say that So now when you see here, we are comparing two things and we are making use of these words. For example, when you look at the first one, he worked, he worked as his father did. So now here we are comparing the work done by he and the father and we want to say they are same. He worked as his father did. Similarly, she likes tennis, so do I. So when we say so do I, we want to say that I also like tennis. So instead of saying she likes tennis, I also like tennis, we can simply say she likes tennis and so do I. Then the next one is he looks just like his mother. So we want to compare the resemblances and we want to say he looks just like his mother. And this one is our dog is just the same as theirs. So maybe the breed of the dogs are same and we are comparing these two dogs. So our dog is just the same as theirs. Now can you make some examples of any of these expressions by using these expressions? He cooks as his mother did. He cooks as his mother did. 
Uh, all right, that is very nice. So now, Chaitanya, you are saying he cooks as his mother did, but this is incorrect because here you are using the present tense cooks. All right, but here then this did is the past. Very nice. So in the place of does you have to in, in the place of did here you have to make use of does. So then you can say he cooks as his mother does. So when you eat this person's dishes and then you almost have the same kind of a taste. Very nice. Right Deepika can you make an example here using any of these words. He likes the sweets are so good. He likes sweets and so do I. Alright. So you want to say that he also likes sweets and you also like. Very nice. Yes Chaitanya can you and then or anybody any other example? Our car is just the same as theirs. Mm, all right, our car is just the same as theirs. All right, so maybe your neighbors and you have the same model of car. All right, any other example? I am looks just like my mother. So I am looks, or when you say I am uh, looking, this is wrong. So the second part of the sentence says same. You have to make some corrections here. So not I and no s. Okay, I look. All ah, right, I look as my, I look just like my mother very nice so then when we want to say the two things to people all right or when some things are similar then we can make use of these sentences and these words now the other option also we have when we want to compare we can also make use of words like So to take a few examples, again for comparisons, we can also make use of more than, older than, or most, or the oldest. Then we can say that, okay. then we say, she uh, cricket is more popular than tennis. So now we are comparing cricket and tennis and we want to say that cricket is more popular or we want to say that she is older than her colleague. So, means she is older and maybe the colleague is younger and we say she is older than her colleague. Can you make any examples more than or maybe older than? Why are we using more popular and older than in these two differences? All right, okay, Chaitanya, I will come to that point. I, yeah, you have, I will explain this, why we are using like this and why we are using older, all right. Uh, do you want to make any examples here? You are talking about Nalgonda in Hyderabad. So then you can say Hyderabad is more popular than Nalgonda. Uh, all right, Hyderabad is you can say bigger. Hyderabad is bigger than Nalgonda. Okay, bigger right? than yes. Okay. And of course you will say my uh, Deepika. You can say my son is. Uh, Right, my son is older than my daughter or we can also make use of the word elder. My son is elder to my daughter. So, this we can make some comparison. Okay, now when we come to this most and oldest. So, as you see here we are making only comparing two things, cricket and tennis and she and her colleagues. But we have more things. When we have more than two, more than two nouns or maybe uh, two events, two actions, then we have to make use of this. Uh, sentences like this for example. So, then we can say he is the laziest and most annoying person in our office. So, more than two means there are so many people in the office and among these people this person is the laziest and the most annoying person. All right. Now, Chaitanya I come to your doubt. Why are we using this laziest and why are we using this annoying and most annoying or why are we using more popular and why are we using this older. So, usually when we say comparison, then we make use of these adjectives because adjectives can talk about quality and number and size and color. So, usually we make comparison regarding these aspects. So, then we can make use of adjectives. Now, so when we start using them in comparison, then they become comparatives and superlatives also. So, then here we are talking about two things and here we are talking about more than two, yes, more than two. So, then we have to use like that. When the adjectives are one word and small words like cheap, we can simply add er and est, cheap, cheaper, cheapest, deep, deeper, deepest. 
So, sometimes the spellings also undergo change. So, nice e is already there. So, we just add r nicer and nicest. Some consonants we have to double like fat, fatter and fattest and then when it is l y then we have to remove this y and add i e r costly, costlier and costliest. There are some irregular adjectives also like bad, worse and worst and good, better, best. So, when the adjectives are small words, single words, we can change them like this when we use them in comparison. But then what happened? There may be some longer words also. So, then the rules are different for longer adjectives. So, for longer adjectives, we do not follow this rule of er and est. For example, if we want to say, now these are longer words, intelligent, practical and useful. So, now we cannot say comparative as intelligenter, that would be incorrect. So, then to this word, we add one more and we say more intelligent. Similarly, when we say practical, we have to add a more here and then we say more practical and more useful. And when the same things are used in superlative, then in the place of more, we have to add a most. So, then it is with the most and then we can say practical is more practical and most practical. Useful becomes more, more useful, useful and more most useful. useful. That is why when I wrote annoying, a n n o y i n g, so annoying becomes more, more annoying and more most annoying. annoying. But lazy, lazy is a small word, so that is why we can say Lazy. lazier Lazy. and laziest. This is how we decide whether to add more or most or to add this er and est. The next point is when we are comparing two equal nouns, then to compare these two equal nouns, we can make use of some phrases or some structures like this. We can say so, as and as or not and then. So, these two things will tell us that the nouns which we are talking about are equal. All right, they are not less or more, they are equal. For example, now here we want to compare the speed of a cheetah and a deer and we say that cheetah runs as fast as a deer. So, now when we compare these two animals in speed, then they run equally fast. So, that is why we are making use of as and as. All right. So, cheetah runs fa as fast as a deer. Can you make some example? with so as or as as? She is. Hmm. Mm, she is. You can think, huh, she is as. Taller as hmm. her. Okay. She is as taller as her sister. Now, as and as we are making use of only adjective. So, then you should not add this er. You, we can simply say she is as tall as her sister. Yes. Right. Deepika, you want to give some example. So, this is a verb, this is is. Raju reads mm -hmm. as, as, as well as. Yes, Raju reads as well as as Ramu. Okay, very nice. So, here you are comparing uh, reading and you want to say Raju reads as well as Ramu. When it comes to reading, both of them read equally well. Okay. Now, we can also make use of this structure to show that something is not uh, more or less. In fact, they are equal. Okay, for example, so then we can also make use of the negative to say that team A does not have more points than team B. So, then team A does not have more points. So, maybe the teams are equal or they share the same kind of points. All right. Or we can also say He does not speak louder. He does not speak louder than his cousin. So, when it comes to speaking, they have the same kind of voice level and we say he does not speak louder than his cousin. Now, there are some more uh, aspects also in this comparison uh, which we will discuss in the coming episode. In that, uh, not then. Uh we are using positive things. In this, we are you are using negative things, yes. negative sentences. Mm -hmm. 
Mm, why don't we use positive sentence? Then positive sentence you have to use like this. Positive sentence we have to use like this, like we said. Cheetah runs as fast as, she is as tall as, okay, I am as intelligent as. So, when they are positive and equal, we can make use of this. When we want to show that somebody, something is not more or something is not less, then we can make use of the negative structure. Alright, we will continue this in the next episode. Thank you. Now, listen to two people conversing with each other. They discuss some important issue. Let us discuss about inferiority complex. Inferiority complex is an emotion. It is a feeling that is created in your mind. It happens when you are not able to measure up to a certain standard, especially when you compare yourself to others. Inferiority complex is a problem that many people in today's youth are facing. Because there is so much competition around us, it becomes natural for us to compare ourselves with one another. And in some cases, it results in, in the concept of inferiority complex. Now, there are several reasons that can cause inferiority complex. Let's look at some of them. Now, the main reasons are, first of all, low self-confidence. Second, a lack of self-esteem. And third, a feeling of inadequacy. Let's look at each of these. Now, first, what is self-confidence? Self-confidence is the belief or the trust that a person has in their abilities or in their self. And if a person has a good amount of belief in themselves, they are said to have high self-confidence. If they are doubtful of themselves, they are not confident that they can do something properly, then they, they are said to have low self-confidence. Self-confidence is one of the reasons that makes a person have inferiority complex. Now, the second reason that was stated is a lack of self-esteem. Self-esteem is nothing but the opinion that a person has about themselves. Now, sometimes this opinion is a very high, it's a great opinion. Ante, they feel they are good at everything. They have a very big opinion about themselves. I can do everything around me. Then that person is said to have high self-esteem. But sometimes... The person does not have a very good opinion about themselves. It can even be a negative opinion. That is when the person is said to have a low self-esteem. If a person has low self-esteem, then the chances of them judging themselves or feeling that they are not good at something is high. In fact, if a person makes a mistake and they have low self-esteem, the chances of them blaming themselves more than needed is also high. Now linked to the concept of lack of self-esteem, there is also a feeling of inadequacy. What does this mean? If a person feels that they are inadequate, they feel they are not good enough. They might feel that they don't deserve something, that they are not up to the mark to do something. They may even feel that they don't have the adequate amount of skills to do a particular task in a good way. For example, Let's look at an instance where each, all these three reasons for inferiority complex are observed. Now, you are in your school or your college and you are suddenly asked to speak in front of your class. So, public speaking. Now, if you don't have enough confidence in yourself that nen cheya galanu, nen maatlaada galanu, if you don't have that confidence, you may make mistakes when speaking. If you have a low self-esteem that you don't think that you are up to the mark, you feel that you don't have a very good opinion about yourself, then definitely you will feel if you make a mistake in front of others, you will feel, why did I make a mistake? Unnecessarily. And that lack, that feeling of inadequacy will also contribute. So this is an example where all three of these concepts will lead to you feeling that you are less than somebody because you may have compared yourself with the people around you. True. When your mind is filled with so many negative thoughts, negative feelings about yourself, why is that negative feelings arising? Because you are thinking on your feeling that you may not be good enough, you may not de deserve it, somebody else is better than me, somebody else is doing much better job than I am. I am asking you to take a break from such a feeling. Stop and think. First, calm yourself, compose your mind because 
once your mind is calm and composed, you will be able to think of a positive approach for such a problem. Now, remember, inferiority complex is an unreal feeling that is created in your mind. It is completely unreal and it is completely unnecessary as well. You need to overcome such an inferiority complex. Remember, each of us have our own strengths and our own weaknesses. I have my own strengths and weaknesses. The other person has their own strengths and weaknesses. Somebody else has their own strengths and weaknesses. But we don't speak out loud. So I don't know about them. They don't know about me. But that does not mean that they are good at something and I am not. Each of us are different. No two persons are alike. What you need to do is think. If they are good at something, which I am not, I may just take some time to improve and to get over it. The same way, they may not be good at some activities and some capabilities, which I may be excellent at. So that is how you analyze, that is how you realize. The first and the best thing to do to overcome such a negative feeling is to slightly improvise to make it and give it a positive approach. How do you do that? Take a piece of paper and a pen. Write down the list of activities that you have learnt, you have known and you think you are good at. It could be very simple activities to very complex activities. Simple as in your drawing, colouring, painting, you can be good at mehendi or any other art form, you can be good at dance, sport, academics, whatever you are good at, write down. The list may be one, two or more, more number of activities, good. Then look at that list. These are nothing but your strengths. How are they your strengths? For example, you have listed drawing, colouring and you are good at maths. You may be good at physics, you may be good at science. Now you have listed those. How are you good at it? You have learnt about it, you studied, you practiced it, you made an effort. Yes or no? That is how you learnt. That is exactly why you know all these activities. The same way, make another list which you feel that you may not be so good at. Then write down those list, see the number of activities, learn about it, improvise and get over such a negative feeling. That will be the best thing to do. You know what you are good at, you know where you need to work hard. Yes, the next will be stop and fight the urge to compare yourself with others at every point of time. See, what happens is when you are comparing yourself to others, all that is coming in your mind is you are thinking equally about the other person as much as you are thinking about yourself. You are giving the other person also equal or maybe more importance than you are supposed to give to yourself. You are only seeing that he or she is good at something, I am not so good. He or she is better at this, I am not so good. They are good in conducting themselves in public spaces. They are good in talking out loud in their English, they are fluent in it. They are good in studies, they are good in uh, maths, they are good in some other activities, I am not. They are good in dressing up and I am not. It is not necessary for you to compare at every place. It is absolutely not healthy to compare at every place. Where you need to compare is, they are doing something, an, an activity or a task. Can I also do it? Then I will want to do it and I want to improve at it. This approach is positive. This is leading to healthy competition. A healthy competition will improve you and it will make you better. Except that if you are constantly comparing at every point, all that you are seeing is a negativity, which is not true. It is absolutely not true. They are good at something, you are good at something. That is all there is. There is not much of a difference. We all are built in our own beautiful way. That is what we need to realize. And the next will be, take a commitment to remove the negative thoughts within you. Ki give yourself a positive attitude, a positive vibe. See the positives in every activity that you do. Always. And remember one thing. Never ever overestimate your weaknesses and don't ever underestimate your strengths. Believe in yourself, have faith, have confidence and beat the inferiority complex which is simply an unreal feeling, an unreal cloud that is in your head. Well, now listen to a story. Try to observe the vocabulary and the grammar in it. So, here is a story 
which tells us that everything that we receive in our lives is from God alone. And there are some people who don't believe it, who might believe that it is their actions or what they do that brings us what we get in life. So the title of the story is God Alone Provides. A generous king once ruled in the land of Andhra. Every day two beggars would come to him for alms and he would give them food and money. On receiving the alms, one of them, the older one, would say, God provides. The other beggar, the younger of the two, would say, our king provides. So this uh, king was very generous. He gave whatever he had to other people and uh, he would give money or food to, who, uh, to people who came and begged from him. So there were two beggars who would come to him and he would always give them food and money. On receiving it, the older man would say, God provides. And the younger man would say, our king provides. One day, the king gave them more money than usual, whereupon the older man cried out loudly, God provides. This annoyed the king who thought, it is I who am, uh, who am feeding him. And he keeps saying, God provides, God provides. It is time he learned his real ben who his real benefactor is. So as usual, the king gave them money, but this time he gave more than the usual. And he, the old man, as expected, said, God provides. The king was very angry because he felt, I am the one who is giving them money or food, but this man keeps saying, God provides. So let me try to teach him, let me teach him who is the real benefactor, the person who gives benefit to others. Here it is a king who is the benefactor. The next day after he had given them arms, he asked the beggars to go by a little used road instead of their usual one. I have provided for one of you, he said, God will provide for the other. So he asked them to travel by a route which was lonely, there were not many people and he said, so I am going to provide for one of you, God will provide for the other. He made sure that the person who always praised him went first. He had ordered that a purse of gold be kept on the road in the beggar's path so that he would find it. But as the beggar walked down the road, he wondered why the king had sent him that way. Perhaps he wants me to enjoy the privacy of this road, he thought. It is indeed a beautiful road and so broad. One can walk with eyes closed and he closed his eyes. As a result, he missed seeing the purse. It was spotted and picked up by the other beggar who was coming behind him. So when the king sent these two beggars onto that lonely road, he asked the younger man to go first. Now the younger man, while he was going, he felt the road is so broad, so nice and maybe the king wanted him to enjoy the road. This, And then he closed his eyes and started walking. He didn't, And so he missed the purse which was kept for him. The next day the king asked the beggars whether they had found anything on the road he had sent them by. And he looked meaningfully at the younger man. But the beggar shook his head. So he hadn't seen the purse which the king had provided for him. It was a beautiful road, he said, but I did not find anything on it. But I did, said the other man. I found a purse of gold. God provides. Now the king became even more determined to show the older beggar that he was their true benefactor. So while the beggars were going away, he called the younger one back and gave him a pumpkin. The pumpkin had been hollowed out and filled with silver coins, but the beggar did not know that. On the way, he sold it to a shopkeeper for a few coins. So what happened? The king wanted to show the older man that he is the one who provides for them. And so he sent away the two beggars, but before the younger man left, he gave him a pumpkin which was hollowed out. That is. The inside part of the pumpkin was removed and it was filled with silver coins. Now this young uh, beggar, he didn't know what to do with it. 
and he sold it to a shopkeeper for a few coins. The next day, the king asked the beggars if anything eventful had happened, anything special had happened the previous day, looking meaningfully at the younger beggar. Nothing, said the beggar, except that I earned a few more coins than usual by selling the pumpkin you had so generously given me. The king tried hard not to show his dismay, his disappointment, his anger. And you, he said to the other beggar, did you too earn more than usual? I certainly did, said the beggar. I was, as I was passing by, a shopkeeper called me and gave me a pumpkin. When I went home and cut it, I found that it was full of silver coins. As I always say, God provides. So, the older man has proved that it is not the king who is the, ben who is the benefactor. He is not the only one giving us alms. It is God who decides who should get the benefit from something. parable that you are now you are going to listen to, observe the words, the structures, etc. Hello everyone, good day to you all. Welcome back to another segment of English for All. Now today it is time that we hear and learn an interesting moral story and a good moral out of it. I am sure Manzi has a lot of stories with her and she will love to share one with us today. You're right there, Varsha. I do have a nice story to share with you and everyone today. So this story is about a tiger and a hare. Hare is a rabbit. Okay. So once there was a tiger in the jungle and it was about lunch time, meal time for the tiger and it was very hungry. So it was sitting there near its uh, den and it noticed that there was a hare which was uh, jumping past a tree okay. nearby. Hmm. So the tiger thought that is a cute little hair, I think I will choose that as my meal today. 
So it went after the hare and the hare started running. It saw that the tiger was chasing it. So the hare began running and the tiger chased the hare. Ultimately, it caught a hold of the hare. And as it was about to, you know, dig its paw into the hare to kill it, the tiger saw a deer nearby. Hmm. So the tiger saw the deer and then it looked at the hare and it said, I don't think that this hare is big enough to fill my stomach. It's such a small animal. I will still be hungry after eating this hare. Maybe I should choose the deer. I think I will go after the deer now. I will wait. I will keep this hare here. And if I don't get the deer, I will come back and kill the hare. So the tiger went and put the hare near one tree. And then it went and chased the deer. Of course, we know it chased the deer because it wanted a bigger meal. Mm. A better way to fill its stomach. So it started chasing the deer. Of course, deer have very slender legs which help it run quickly and jump. So the tiger was no match for the deer and the deer ran away very quickly. And ultimately, the tiger could not catch it. It came back to the tree where it kept the hare and saw that the hare had also gone. Naturally, oh, obviously it will you, escape. Exactly, you leave the hare, it will escape. So then the tiger thought to itself, unnecessarily I went after that deer and I lost the hare also that I had. Oh, so it lost both the meals. Exactly, it lost both animals and it could not fill its stomach for that meal of the day and it continued to be hungry. So this story, we see that the tiger was trying, it got an opportunity to eat two animals. Hmm. It saw the hare and then it saw the deer. For it, the deer seemed like a better opportunity. A bigger meal. A bigger meal. A bigger meal and a better chance for it to fill its stomach. So, it let go of the opportunity to eat the hare. Which that it already certain. had. Exactly. It already had the hare. It was certain that that would happen. Hmm. But the tiger chose to choose something which is better but not certain. Hmm. Right? Hmm. As in... Kitch. The tiger had already caught the hare and it was for sure that it would anyway eat the hare. Yes. But it also saw the deer and it wanted a bigger meal, a better meal. So it just wanted to hide the hare and go and catch the deer exactly. also. Exactly. Hmm. So hmm. the very same thing is what the moral of the story is. The moral is a, actually a really nice proverb which says, A bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. Okay. Now, this is a very vague statement. It doesn't make sense. You're thinking, maybe you might be thinking, where has a bird come in the picture? This proverb means that it is better to have a lesser but certain opportunity than to have an opportunity which is bigger and better but not certain. Hmm. Ante, suppose we have two, two things in our hands. One opportunity, another opportunity. This one is certain. But this one is slightly greater. This one is slightly greater. This one is we are not sure whether there we will no get guarantee. it or not. There is no guarantee that we will get this. Hmm. It is better to choose this one which is certain than to let go of this and go after this when you are not sure you will get it. Exactly. Which is exactly, exactly what the tiger did. Hmm. It let go of the certain chance of eating the hare and went after eating a deer which is not certain. He did not get this. Had he gotten this, it would have been great. Hmm. But he didn't. So, neither did he get this, nor did he get this. Exactly. So, that is the moral. It is better to always go for a chance which is certain, which hmm. is definitely going to happen, than to choose something which is not certain, which is not guaranteed in that greed. And sometimes we see that in our day-to-day -day lives also. Exactly. Can you think of any situation? See, sometimes it so happens that we get some opportunities that come our way. Some opportunities, some good opportunities come our way. Now, for example, uh, I don't know if this is quite, uh, it is relating to your story or not. I can take a live example over here. For example, I'm applying for a job. Now, I get an offer from one company offering, say, 10,000 salary which is for sure, I already got the offer letter, the acceptance letter is also with me. And then I see that there is another company that is offering 25,000 salary, but I didn't get the offer letter over there. So just out of either out of greed or out of the pure uh, financial need that I might go to that company also. 
it would be curiosity it could be my financial need or it is because i need a bigger salary ee offer letter ni itlaage pakkan petti ee company ni odulkuni i might go to that but akkada job vastunda leda anedi guarantee ledu exactly but once i go there if i get the job fine but if i don't then i am losing that i am losing this First also one also and this happens not only in our job or in our professional field it happens everywhere else we tend to get opportunities but aim out in that we don't see the importance of what we have that is yes. exactly what the tiger missed over there <laughs> exactly it didn't see the importance of that little hair that it already had had it been content with it then probably it could have planned it better so man the grown opportunity ni we are not able to see the importance or the worth of that so we are taking the risk of letting it go and taking something bigger Exactly. but at the end of the day sometimes we lose both and that is where your story comes up properly fitting your example was very relevant it's a very well uh, way good way to summarize it all and like you said it is better to not take that risk and stay with something that we have that is certain that is guaranteed instead of running after things which are which are volatile which are not even sure for us exactly we just need to see the worth and the importance of the opportunity that we already have and make good use of it good use of instead it. of running behind something bigger greater which is more risky which is more volatile like you said which is not certain unnecessarily we end up losing both exactly varsha you really caught the essence very well Your and thank you that was an excellent story i was able to relate to it oh it's been my pleasure to share it with you and your example was very relevant i think some of our viewers would also be able to relate to it well thank you so much for listening to me and thank you for watching